Hey, it's Kat. Lately we've looked at the flow of information throughout a program. We've covered sequence, which means that lines of code are executed one by one from top to bottom throughout our program. We've also looked at selection, which allows us to make a choice and execute a piece of code based on that. The third and final control structure is repetition. Repetition allows us to repeat a certain piece of code until a specific condition is met. Another name for repetition is loop, and we've got two loops that we're going to look at. The first one is a for loop, and the second one is a while loop. Both of these follow the same idea that you keep repeating the code until a condition is met. When we put some repetition into our program, the program carries on as usual until it gets to the loop. So there is the starting point for the loop, and that sets up a loop counter or a variable which we're testing against. Then it will execute some lines of code and it will come back to that starting point. Now if we've got a loop counter we might be saying if our loop counter is less than 10 keep looping and every time it gets to this little point here it will say well is my counter still less than 10? If it is keep looping. If it's not skip out of the code, skip out of the loop and continue on with the program. So we keep looping until a condition is met, then we jump out and continue on with our code. We'll start off with a very basic for loop. We start off with the word for, and then in our brackets we first of all set up our loop counter. So we might have int i equals 0. Then we say what our stopping condition is. So we'll continue looping while i is less than 5 and each time we loop we want i to increase by 1. Then whatever the loop is going to do is going to happen inside the curly braces. So just to reiterate this one will set the counter. This is my condition and this one is my increment. Okay, you can't read the word increment there, but increment means to increase the value of. So there's no point having a loop go round and round and be tested against a condition if the counter never changes. So we could be going from a large number down to zero, or we could be going from zero up to a larger number. So our counter, sorry, our increment will either be going up or it will be going down. Just really quickly, I've used plus plus there and minus minus. Plus plus is the same as saying i equals i plus one, so increasing the value of i by one, and minus minus is the same as saying i is equal to i minus 1. The plus plus, the minus minus only works for incrementing or decrementing by 1. If you wanted to change the value by more than that in there, you would put i equals i plus 5 as an example. To have a quick demonstration of a while loop, if I was to make a while loop do the same thing as the for loop a moment ago, counting up from zero uh, and stopping at four, then I would have while i is less than five, I'm going to do stuff. Now I've put i is less than five in there, but I've never created five. So that means that I have to do that before the loop, so int i equals zero and because the while loop only has that test condition in the brackets means that that increment I have to do inside the loop itself so my i plus plus will go in the loop then whatever the loop is actually going to do would happen in there so two structures in this case to do the same thing 
you'll find that different scenarios will require the one loop or the other loop. Um, I typically use for loops a lot more often than while loops, um, but that's usually because I'm doing something that is counting. For loops are easier for counting than while loops because that first line has everything built into it. Uh, but both have their place. So let's have a look at the actual syntax of these in Eclipse. Okay, let's check out for loops. So in my control structures project, I've created a new file called for loop. Now, I'm just going to give you a basic for loop. And to do this, I can actually just pop it all in paint. So just a stock standard template, java.awt, java.applet, all that kind of jazz. Okay, so a for loop, I start with the word for, all lowercase, and then all my loop counter, my test condition, and my loop counter increment or decrement all goes inside those brackets. So I start off by declaring my counter. So int i equals zero. Um, it's fairly common to use int i as your loop counter. You'll see it in pretty much every exercise you do. You can use j or x or you can call it counter, whatever you like. I use i out of habit. Okay, so my loop is going to continue while i is less than 5. So because I'm saying less than 5, that means that once it increments to 5, it doesn't execute for that value of 5. The last time it executes is actually at a 4. Now I'm going to increment my loop by one each time, so I might do this the longer way, i equals i plus one. So this has set up my loop. The body of the loop has to go inside a pair of curly braces. So what I might do is I might just output the value of i. So g dot draw string i, and we're going to print that at 20, 20. Okay, now it's giving me an error, and uh, because this is an integer and not a string, I just have to give it a dummy string beforehand. So it was just thinking it needed text. I haven't given it text, so I added onto some text. Okay, let's run that and see what happens. Okay, it's done something, we can see that, but what's happening is it's printing the value of i on top of itself because it's always printing in the same position. So what I would typically do is I need to decide if it's moving, if I want my values printing across the screen or down the screen. I might do them down the screen. So up the top I'm going to declare a variable called ypos and I'll start that at 20. So this is going to be my y position. I'm going to replace that 20 with ypos and then each time it loops I'm going to increment ypos by 20 so that it prints a line below. So let's just run that again. 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we start off we set i to 0. i is less than 5 and it pops into the loop. It'll draw out the value of i at 20 comma 20. Then it will increment my y pos to 20 plus 20 which is 40. It'll go up to the loop. It will say i equals i plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. That is less than 5. We go in we print it out to the screen at 20 comma 40. Then we increment our y pos by another 20 meaning that y pos is now equal to 60. We go up to the top of our loop i becomes i plus 1, so i is now equal to 2. 2 is less than 5, we go into our loop, and so we continue. If I was to say i is less than or equal to 5, that means that it would also print out the value 5. Okay. Now if I wanted these printing across the screen, I might declare a variable that was called xpos. So let's just pop that one at 20 and use xpos here. 
and change these ones to x pos. So rather than the y incrementing, the x is incrementing and they should be going across the screen. Okay, so it depends on what you prefer. So I'm just going to get rid of my x pos and I'm going to leave it at y pos. Okay, let's say for example we wanted to count up to 100, but we didn't want to go in ones, we wanted to go in tens. So let's say, oh no, let's go something random, let's go up by 15 each time. Let's just run that one. 0, 15, 30, 45 and so on. After 90 it would have added on 15 and it would have become 105. 105 is not less than or equal to 100 and the loop would have stopped. Let's replicate that loop and to do the exact same thing but using a while loop. So let's just declare a counter int i equals 0. Now I'm going to point out here the scope of a variable. Y pos is declared in the class and that means that it is available anywhere between this open bracket and this closed bracket. This i here has been declared in the for loop and that means this version of i exists only in this block. So I can use i again down here and it won't cause any problems. I'm not saying that's the smartest thing to do, but I'm saying it's possible. So we'll say while i is less than or equal to 100, we're going to continue looping. So we can actually copy that and pop that straight into our while loop. The only other thing that we need to do, because if I run this, I'm going to come into problems probably. Okay, applet has started and nothing's happening. And I can't close it either. I have to hit the terminate button. So what I said before was that if you've got a loop, it's not going to serve a purpose if you're never going to meet the condition. So I haven't put in my i equals i plus 15. That means that i was stuck in an endless loop and basically I killed my program. Okay, so if you have a loop that cannot end, it will kill the program. So if I run it this time, we should be fine. And it's put them one after the other. What I might do is I'm going to set y pos to 20 again, so they start at the same height. But I'm going to put the results of the while loop across. Okay. So this is the set of re results produced by the for loop and this is the set of results produced by the while loop. So again, it depends on the actual scenario as to which one is going to work for you. I'm just going to delete that while loop and look back at the for. If we wanted to do a while loop going backwards, we would start at a higher number. So let's start at 150 and we'll keep looping while i is greater than 0 and we're going to then go down by 20 each time. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so it counts from 150 down by 20s until it cannot go any further. Okay, so once it was at 10, it would have minus 20 off that, would have ended up as minus 10. Minus 10 is not greater than 0, so it would not have executed further after that. Okay, just another quick demo here. I can also use characters. So let's say I start at A, and I'll continue while, that is, while I is less than or equal to Z. And I'm going to increment by one each time. So now I'll just use plus plus there to 
plus plus there to increment by one each time. And now I should get a printout of the alphabet. Okay, so I'll just put y pos equals 20 there because what happened was when I resized the screen, it kept adding on to the value of y pos, so all my text disappeared all the way down the screen. So now each time I redraw the screen, it will wipe up, the Y position will start at 20. And then we've got our whole alphabet. So a for loop can loop its way through numbers. It can also loop its way through characters. Remember that our for loop, in whatever style, uses a loop counter, a test condition, keep going while this is true, and an increment or a decrement. That is the basic of looping.